if you'll indulge me before we go for a snack, I'd like to talk about the year ahead. It's the start of another academic year, and we have all the fresh hope and optimism that comes with it. This year, our moment of reflection feels probably more profound than usual, a little bit eerie perhaps. Maybe it was Monday's solar eclipse, which gave us that rarest of opportunities to pause and marvel at the universe around us. Amidst all the seeming chaos in our world, we saw that the Earth, the Moon, and the stars move unfailingly forward on their course, just like David Weintraub and Kayvon Sasson told us. It was a moment where we could feel incredibly small, but it was also a moment to reflect on our own movement, our own movement through time and space. We are unique individuals, but we have chosen to gather here to dedicate our lives to the betterment of people and indeed the world. As we saw darkness slowly covering the sun, we were also reminded of the challenges we face. There are shadows that can obscure the light of our work. The ideals that we hold close, that we celebrate, that we come here to recognize, that we share, that define who we are and the work to which we have committed ourselves are more important than ever, and they are under threat. Ideals of inquiry and discovery, ideals of learning and teaching, of equality, of the very idea of inclusion and equality and progress and excellence, of civility, of diversity of thought, and of respect for evidence, all under challenge. This is a defining moment for our university, a time when we must consider the reasons for our very existence and recommit to the values that drive our mission and define all of these splendid achievements. We must join together in these uncertain times and we must remember and live the values that bind us together. To confront head on and to overcome, to stare down, the challenges that we face, to join together with a shared commitment to overcome false narratives, false and hateful narratives that threaten to undercut our civil society and indeed undercut the great universities like Vanderbilt. Those narratives have power, but so do we. So do we. They say that higher education is out of touch. We say that the discoveries in education that we honor today at Vanderbilt are driven by a commitment to address the most complex challenges facing society today. They tell people, I guess except for their children, higher education is out of reach, unaffordable. We say that through our investments in scholarships and the ever-growing support of our alumni, friends, and donors, we have put a Vanderbilt education squarely in reach of every deserving student, slashing student debt while recruiting an ever more talented, diverse student body. They say that we indoctrinate students rather than teach them. We say, to the contrary, we are the last remaining bastion, the last remaining bastion where people from different backgrounds and faiths and beliefs live side by side and study together and challenge each other in reasoned discourse and leave with clear knowledge, not only of the beauty of the difference, the value of the difference, but how to leverage that for our success and society's success. They say that our research is undeserving of funding, that the way forward in America is to cut research to balance the budget. We say America's research universities are the most important knowledge creators in the world. We are America's greatest institutions. At Vanderbilt, we cannot just stay the course we must go big and we must go bold and come together to advance in every way our values and our mission. 
We will go big and bold on continuing to support you, our faculty. This summer, we launched the Chancellor's Chair Challenge, a year-long 30 million drive to establish 30 new endowed chairs. The Board of Trust will always say to me, when will we have enough chairs? I said, never. <laughs> never. Our faculty is too brilliant, too talented. And when everyone else has a chair, we'll hire more faculty. The university is providing a million dollar match to each donor who donates one million dollar for an endowed chair. This is part of the $300 million investment in graduate education and research that was recommended by a great faculty committee. We've already received two commitments for the chairs. Uh, I think in the last 10 days I signed those gift agreements. Many more will come in. Since 2010, we have added approximately 200 new endowed chairs for a current total of 420 chairs, almost doubling them in the last seven years. Recognizing the important work of the Humanities Committee are charged, we will start a special library collections initiative that will award substantial new funding on an annual basis to faculty to acquire new collections of primary resources and re research materials. This investment is critical, particularly for the humanities and the arts, which rely on robust library collections. The Chancellor's Faculty Fellows Program has made significant strides in supporting the newly tenured faculty at a critical time in their career. Since 2015, we have awarded more than $3 million to this cohort, representing 41 faculty members. But the important thing is the impact of this work, the impact made by these faculty publishing books, conducting new research, hosting conferences, leading councils and societies in their field, and showing the way of trans-institutional work. We will go big and go bold on investing and living diversity, equity, and inclusion. Just two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, let's not forget the ugly and deadly face, the actions of racism, anti-Semitism, white supremacy, bigotry, and hate unleashed in full force in Charlottesville and at the University of Virginia. Every day, we must recommit ourselves to our values of diversity and welcoming and protecting the safety and dignity of our community and every member of our community. Every day, every day, we must teach our students and remind one another of the power of civility and respect and the advances made through diversity in an educational environment. We have an impairment as educators to cultivate and demonstrate civil, engaged dialogue and disagreement. This is a core American value, and it is in danger. To help us lead us on this path, we welcome Vice Provost for Inclusive Excellence, Melissa Thomas Hunt. Melissa is a recognized scholar in negotiation and a proven leader in inclusive leadership. She will work closely with our provosts and our deans and our faculty and lead inclusion, diversity, and equity efforts for faculty and students. We also welcome Interim Vice Chancellor for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, Tina Smith, who will lead our efforts across the institution. Tina will partner closely with Melissa and others. I want to thank my colleague and friend, George Hill, for coming out of retirement to serve in that important role. I will soon appoint a search committee for this position. Our first year students will once again read, and you should read, Strong Inside, the story of Perry Wallace. This year, this year, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of Perry and Godfrey Dillard bravely stepping onto the basketball court and becoming the first African Americans to in integrate the SEC. We welcome our first group of postdoctoral fellows under our new Academic Pathways program, which seeks to fill the academic pipelines with talented and diverse scholars. Did you have a colleague on your work already on your slides? Well done. We welcome two new colleagues that I want to mention. We welcome many new colleagues, but two I particularly want to mention. They recognize leaders in civil rights in, in our city and across the nation. 
Rhonda Williams is our inaugural John Sigenthaler Chair in History and Associate Professor of Chemistry, Renee Robinson, is our inaugural Dorothy Phillips Faculty Fellow. John, many of us knew, he devoted his life and literally put his life on the line during his career and on the Freedom Rides where he was beaten almost to death with a pipe in Alabama. He devoted his life and his career to justice and equality. And I want to thank the Turner family for endowing that professorship. And Dorothy, Dorothy, the first African-American woman, the very first African-American woman to graduate from the College of Arts and Science, continues in her work to be a leader nationally and internationally in the field of chemistry. What two better people to take those inaugural endowed positions. We will launch a new series of programs on the history of African American Nashville. I thank Associate Provost Ifuma Wanko and our colleague in the School of Medicine, Andre Churchwell, for leading this effort. For the first time, for the first time, freshmen moved into a commons free of a stone pediment emblazoned with Confederate Memorial Hall. You should take a walk over. It is gone. It is gone. But, we, but we're not done because we can't forget because creating memory and history is essential. We'll come together this March to discuss these terrible wounds, these terrible actions, these terrible remnants of the Civil War at the Wrestling with the Past conference being organized by our, our colleague and James Lawson professor Dennis Dickerson. We will go big and we will go bold on research and graduate education. We are at the midpoint of our five-year, $50 million trans-institutional program initiative. TIPS has funded more than 40 projects involving 300 plus faculty, more than 500 graduate students, and 300 undergraduates. The $20 million we've invested so far has already attracted an additional 12 million in external funding and countless breakthroughs. This year, we awarded TIPS funding to 15 projects involving 140 faculty members from all 10 colleges and schools. This year, we will also see significant progress in building out and implementing plans for our $300 million investment in graduate education research. On the recommendation of a faculty committee, we will begin active planning on programs created in honor of our colleague, Russell G. Hamilton, a pioneering scholar of Spanish and Portuguese, and importantly, Vanderbilt's first African-American dean. The Russell G. Hamilton's program will begin this year and will award new graduate PhD fellowships in Russell's name. The endowed Russell G. Hamilton Graduate Leadership Development Institute will enhance the quality of the graduate student experience and provide leadership training, mentoring, and career development for the university's diverse global graduate students. We will also be investing in efforts to further disciplinary, interdisciplinary, and global engagement research and scholarship efforts informed by the work of the International Study Group. We will go big and we will go bold on continuing to recruit and teach exceptional students. As I met the class of 2021 and their families this past weekend, I was struck again by the many disparate dreams, hopes, and indeed struggles and questions that led them here. Though their paths were unique, all had one thing in common, destination Vanderbilt. We received more than 31,000 applications for 1,600 spots um, in the freshman class, up 44% from 2010. Compared to all prior years, more of the students we offered admissions to accepted our offer over those of peers, with 47% of the students choosing Vanderbilt, a record high. These students, your students, bring tremendous diversity of every kind in our community, diversity of thought, faith, experience, socioeconomic background, race, ethnicity, culture, outlook. Minority students comprise 45% of our first year class, up from 30% just five years ago. We have been able to build this remarkable community together, together because of our incredible financial aid, Opportunity Vanderbilt, supported by a legion of donors and friends. This year, 
68% of first year students are receiving financial aid of some kind. 15% of the students are receiving Pell Grants this year. This is a record high, up for 13% last year. We have so much more work to do, but it is an indicator of our passion, our success in building a socioeconomically diverse class. We will go big and bold in planning and building a campus that supports our vision. So many of you have engaged vigorously in the future VU land use planning process. We are seeing the results all around us together as together the campus is being transformed. Through fundraising and good financial stewardship, we have been able to take on exciting and necessary improvements for research teaching our students and for serving our broader community. Our classrooms, labs, gathering spaces must be rethought and renovated to reflect the Vanderbilt of today. Diverse, engaged, trans-institutional, dynamic, civil, bursting with curiosity and creativity. Ground is broken already on large additions to the nursing and divinity schools. The Owen School's Walker Management Library and the School of Medicine's Eskin Library are now undergoing major renovations. Thank you to Peabody. It has engaged in visionary discussions to renovate and reimagine large parts of its campus for its mission. We will see major improvements in visionary build-outs in Payne, Home Economics, Hobbs, and Mayborn. Arts and Science has begun to reimagine its physical plant. The provost is working with Dean Benton to engage in that important shared governance on the multitude of opportunities for major improvement in the many buildings in ANS. We will make great progress across all of the schools. However, I would be remiss if I did not mention two projects at the very top of my list. A new hub for humanistic inquiry. We must invest aggressively and generously in the humanities. We simply cannot act as if that is something that we are going to do parallel to all the other exciting things we do. It is central to everything we do. And the most strident attacks on the university are on humanistic inquiry. We must invest. And I think a new hub is essential. I understand that the dean is already uh, looking for opportunities to perhaps expand Furman and other things that uh, have made their way to my office. Another building that we are starting to talk about that I think is important is another building in fundamental research in science, engineering, and biomedical science. We are a university on the move. And we will have great opportunities. We, we have opportunities now. The engineering school is recruiting a superstar from a school on the West Coast that I won't mention. And it's like, where are we going to put this brilliant young scientist? We need to build out our research building, a new research building. We will certainly need more work as our trans-institutional programs grow our existing ones and new ones that are coming along. We are also adding our third upper class residential college to join the Martha Ingram Commons. Construction of the new E. Bronson Ingram College is well underway next to Kirkland Hall and will welcome its first students in the fall of 2018. I marvel at the beauty and timeless nature and the progress being made, but I'm also pleased that the dynamite has ended. <laughs> Our fundraising for these colleges continues to go exceptionally well. This success will allow us to begin to take down Carmichael Towers and further our plans for a full residential college system, first articulated by visionary faculty, some uh, probably in here, John Braxton, Matt Ramsey, David Weintraub, uh, uh, a number of other faculty recommended this and the board endorsed this in 2002 and through the years. We will go big and we will go bold on supporting the well-being of our community. We will not be silent or remain passive when many in our community suffer from mental health challenges. We have seen great success 
with our Go There campaign. This fall, we will go to phase two. We will launch Go There st Stories, which will be TED-style talks from faculty, staff, and students about their care and about their journey and about their struggles. And we have reached out to you, our faculty, so that we are investing in the care today, but fundamental research to develop new care and new cures that allow everyone now, but especially in the future, lead healthy and productive lives. I thank Charlene for continuing her work in the Senate on wellness, and my faculty committee will be bringing recommendations with Charlene for implementation on what I call a bench to bedside approach. We will go big and we will go bold for financial stewardship and health. Maybe this would have said, should have said we're gonna go humbly with financial stewardship. Our financial position has never been stronger. Our endowment is the highest it's ever been. We had a very healthy bottom line for the university in FY17 of approximately $70 million. I think it's the highest it's ever been. Now, people always say, well, let's spend it all. We will. These funds, however, they're used for the critical investment in people, and particularly in the schools for buildings, and for replenishing the important school reserves. A very good year. Our debt still sits under $400 million, by far, the lowest among our peers, by far. And in the first year post the restructuring of Vanderbilt University Medical Center, they produced the very best financial results in their history. Finally, I want to stress we need to go big and we need to go bold in telling our story. We are refocusing our communications efforts to further elevate your stories of achievement and impact against the university's mission. We're lucky to have Steve Ertel join us from the World Wildlife Fund, and he is up and ready to serve the faculty in new creative and dynamic ways to tell those stories, to change minds, to demonstrate the importance, the efficacy, the timeless nature of what we do. It is more important than ever we share our work and our discoveries. We have to show appreciation for Vanderbilt and the value of research and education. For this reason, this year we will propose a new program on faculty public engagement. Modeled after our successful Chancellor's Fellows, the Chancellor's Fellows in Public Engagement will deepen support for faculty to actively and effectively engage in the public sphere through writing, speaking, or appearing in those outlets, reaching broad audiences. More than ever, faculty are coming to me and say, I need to speak with a bit more of a megaphone. I want to cross the line and write in publications where people, more people will listen to me. We have to cherish that. We have to support it, and we will fund it with new chancellors public engagement fellowships. Do not be dispirited. When I travel around the country and I talk to people in the media across the whole spectrum, more than ever, more than ever, the public is seeking out reliable, informed, and thoughtful sources from trusted institutions. Our work is more in more demand than ever, and we have to recognize that. We are at an enviable place as a university, not just when we look at our remarkable faculty and student achievements, rankings, and funding, but when we look at really who we are as a community. At the core of our DNA, through challenging times, civility, collegiality, collaboration, embracing, loving diversity, and learning from it, bringing it into the core of what we do every day as we learn, as we debate, as we discover, and we say, I didn't know that. I never saw it that way. I didn't think of that. As we begin this new academic year, in all the many great things you're going to do, try to reaffirm your own commitments and contributions to these shared values. 
engage in the leadership and direction of this university through the faculty governance process, whether it's serving on a committee in the faculty senate, leading a task force, or serving in your school or department. Shared governance is critical, and it needs to occur in every department, school of the university. It is essential. Seek out ways to tell your story. Call on us more than ever. We are compelled to share our story, the impact and promise. You can inspire the next generation of leaders. Imagine my great pleasure. An envelope comes the other day, an email comes today from a, 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 a principal in McMinnville. And there was a picture of David Weintraub talking to 800 kids about astronomy and physics. And it wasn't David who said it. This principal said to me, he is inspiring the next generation of scientists and astronomers and physicists. Hundreds of kids spellbound. Continue to make us the cross-disciplinary destination for the best work in all your teaching and research. This is what differentiates us. I'm thrilled to begin another year with you at this great university, this remarkable place, and in this somewhat unprecedented time. Together, we will have great joy, we will persevere, but we will also light the path for others. There will be no eclipse here. There will be no eclipse. We will light the path for others. We will light that for our students. They will enlighten us. Our colleagues will enlighten us. Our staff will enlighten us. All on this journey of light together. Thank you for all that you do for Vanderbilt.